Welcome to my channel. My name is Brandy, and today I'm going to show you how I made this large barn door with glass inserts. Stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, first things first. My customer really wanted this made out of hardwood, so I ran down to my local Macbeth's Lumber to see what they had um, available in our price range. I quickly found some really pretty ash lumber and I brought that home. If you've never been to a lumber yard before and you've been a little nervous about doing so, I made a quick five tips for the lumber yard video. You can check that in my list of videos or in the little link up above. Now I actually don't have a truck, I still drive an SUV, so I had these guys cut this down to size for me so that I can fit it in my car and take it home. Now you never want to lay hardwood on the floor, so I usually put it on some sawhorses and let it acclimate for a few days. I needed to give myself a straight edge and my joiner is not working right now. So instead I pulled out my Craig plunge saw, which is very similar to a track saw, and I ripped down one straight edge on each of the boards that I'll be using. Once you have that straight edge, you can actually use your table saw to cut down the other side. It will follow that straight edge and give you a nice clean cut. Now I will be including written instructions and plans to this entire tutorial that will be linked in the description below or on my website eternalharvestdecor.com and they're free plans you can get and just adjust the sizing to meet what you need for your door space. Now on a door the two vertical pieces on either side of the door are called styles. So I went ahead and made sure I had a nice straight edge and a piece long enough for the style on both sides of the doors. Then I began to rip down pieces for the rails and those are the pieces that go between the styles and cross the door. They're the horizontal pieces that connect the door all together. So I now will have all the pieces I need for the two rails and the four styles. Now, like I said before, this is a really big door, so this is going to be the style, and it is 87 inches long. So right now, I'm just measuring my length for the two styles, and then I'll go ahead and cut those on my miter saw. Next is where a little bit of math comes in. You're going to have to measure how wide your styles are. These are 6 inches wide, and I need the door overall to be 53 inches wide. So I'm going to need to deduct the 12 inches for each style and see what I come up with left and that is what I will cut my rails to. In this case it ended up being about 41 inches. Now I don't have a workbench that's big enough to fit this big of a door on it, so I am just going to use the ground. I know a lot of people have issues with this. I do not mind working on the ground. I would rather have the space in my workshop. So I lay the door out to see the pattern, and then I start to mark exactly where I want my rails to meet. And I will mark that on both styles, on both sides, so that they are level when they cross over. Now you do have your option when it comes to joinery here. I am using pocket holes, but I know a lot of people don't love those. Another option would be dowels. Dowels are fairly simple to use and you can go ahead and make that happen. I am not super good at doing dowels and getting them centered and I'm a lot faster with pocket holes. And when it comes to customer builds, time is of the essence. So I'm just gonna use pocket holes for this entire build and I will fill in the pocket holes towards the end. I am adding two pocket holes per rail all the way down. And one thing of note, a little pro tip here I'd like to share with you guys is ash is a very hard wood. Sometimes as you're trying to drill out or screw in screws, they tend to get overheated or have a hard time going in. If you add just a little bit of furniture wax or paste, wax paste, then they will slide in like butter and it super helps. Now I'm going to put my hair up and get my goggles on because we are going to do some routing. Make sure you have all your safety gear for this next step. 
it's an important one and it can be pretty dangerous. So I've got everything on I need to, my hair will stay out of the way, and I'm gonna start routing out one eighth of an inch deep in the portions that will accept the glass. My glass is an eighth inch thick, and I just wanna make sure that it sits in there nice and snug. So I'm taking my router all the way around, and that is where the glass will sit down inside. I am giving the glass about a 3 eighths of an inch overhang, and that's where it will sit down inside the door. I measured after routing out these grooves, but you could also get the glass first and then mark out where the glass panel fits on your door and route out to that mark. If you've never used a router before and you're a little nervous, I have made a tutorial on how to use a router for beginners. I'll go ahead and link that here, or you can find that in my list of beginner videos. I actually picked up this corded router, it's a rigid router, um, before doing this project because I didn't wanna have to recharge a battery and I was really, really impressed. So here I'm gonna go ahead and try the glass panel in and make sure I made it deep, the grooves deep enough that it fits down inside nice and snug. I want it just flush with the frame. I'll then be adding some trim around to hold the back side of the glass in. That way if the glass ever breaks, it's pretty easy to go ahead and replace that and put the trim back into place. Okay, I forced myself to come outside. I'm going to finish sanding and possibly staining the door today. I do have these pocket holes that I need to fill and I've bought some of the paint grade wood filler. Um, they're basically just these little wooden dowels that fit perfectly inside these pocket holes. So they'll go real nicely like that and create a flush um, top so that it'll be nice and I don't have to use any wood filler and it'll stain the same as the door. So. Next, I took these pine pocket hole plugs and went around with my tight bond quick and thick and put them into place. They were super simple to use and I think they really gave it a nice finished look. They stained the same as the ash and I was really pleased. You could use wood filler in these. However, I feel like wood filler just doesn't stain the same color as the piece that you're using. It's really hard to make them look professional. So these plugs really helped with that. Next, I took some 80 grit sandpaper to the door and then moved up to 120. I went ahead and tried the glass pieces in one last time to make sure I was where I needed to be. Then I need to remove the glass pieces and stain the entire piece. I'm not gonna lie, working with these long glass pieces was pretty stressful. Every time I tried these in, I had a mini heart attack. <laughs> And when I actually secured them into place, I had another heart attack, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so here's how it all looks before stain. The glass pieces fit in just flush with the backside of the door. So Firm Grip sent me out these nitrite gloves and I really like them for staining. I believe they're available at Home Depot. I removed the glass pieces and it's on to staining. I'm using Ebony by Verithane and it's their premium wood stain. It tends to go on a little bit thicker. I really love the way it looks. It's got a nice smooth finish. Um, and with ash, there's a lot of grain, open grain. And so I'm giving the stain a few seconds to soak into that open grain before I wipe it off. the staining is all finished and now I'm gonna cut the wood panel that will be going in the bottom space I only have three glass panels and the bottom is just a wood panel I'm using 1 8 inch maple plywood and I went ahead and cut it with my heart jigsaw I love that jigsaw and then I'm gonna stain it to match the door I'll be inserting this with routed out grooves the same way that I am doing the glass
Next, I picked up these decorative trim pieces from Home Depot, and I'm gonna start cutting the 45s on these to fit around or frame out the glass. It's important to be really careful when you're cutting little pieces off of little pieces of molding like this with a miter saw. Wait for the blade to stop rotating completely before you lift up the blade, otherwise it will backfire, shoot out the other end, and it can cause some damage. Next, instead of measuring each piece with a measuring tape, I actually just set them into place and mark them with a pencil. And then I go cut the 45s on the miter bench and bring them back out over and try it again. Next, I went ahead and stained all the trim to match the door with the Verifane and got the both sides. You want both sides to be stained because when you flip the door over, you'll be able to see the back side of the trim just slightly through the glass. So make sure it's all stained completely. Next, I'm adding silicone in the grooves and this clear silicone will help give the glass a little snug fit, but also give it a little bit of a buffer in case it's bumped or shaking. It helps with absorbing some of that shock. So I'm taking the glass out. And again, this is super stressful. <laughs> Whenever working with grass, glass, I stress out. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure there's no dust in the grooves and then take that tube of silicone and go all the way around the routed edges. I really just wanted an eighth of an inch piece or bead of caulk here because if you do too much caulk, when you press the glass in, it will seep out on the other side. So just enough to give it some cushion and try to keep it all contained in this groove space. Next, I'm just gonna set the glass right down inside if I can gear myself up enough to make it happen. And then I will use my pin nailer to put the trim all the way around the outside of the glass and hold it into place. And now I can breathe. I was definitely holding my breath the whole time. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna take my pin nailer and the trim that I've already cut and put those into place so that it'll hold the glass in nice and snug. And that's it, that's how I built this door. I went ahead after all of this and touched up all of the staining pieces or any little places I might have missed while staining and wiped off the glass. I'm so excited with how this door came out. I love it so much and I think it will be perfect for my customer. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more tutorials and free plans. Thanks for showing up, you guys, and I will talk to you soon.